This presentation is a step-by-step -step review of how you can scan the neonatal spine on ultrasound. So why should we perform this type of exam? An infant may be born with masses over the spinal area. You may see skin discoloration, such as the picture here, skin tags. It may be a follow-up to abnormalities seen on prenatal ultrasound, trauma during delivery that may result in a hematoma, or you may even see tufts of hair or a sacral dimple on the small of the baby's back. These are all indications for a physician to order an ultrasound of the spine. Before you begin this exam, there's a few key structures you should be familiar with. The regions of the spine, the spinal cord, the conus, and the phylum. So here's a diagram of the neonatal spine. The first seven vertebrae are the cervical portion. After that, you have 12 vertebrae. That's the thoracic portion. Five more after that is the lumbar and another five is the sacral and at the very end you have the coccyx and in neonates uh, the coccyx is mainly composed of cartilage at this time. So let's take a closer look at these structures. The spinal cord will appear as a tubular hypoechoic structure with a central echogenic complex and the conus is just a name for the terminal end of the spinal cord. It's really important to determine where the conus terminates. It should end at L1 to L2. So from the conus, you have a thin filament of connective tissue that's called the phylum. And this structure roughly measures less than two centimeters. Here's a basic protocol for the neonatal spine. Let's begin the exam and walk through the protocol together. When you begin this exam, make sure to explain the ultrasound to the parent and ask verbal permission to perform the exam on the infant. Unbundle the baby and go ahead and place them gently face down with a pillow underneath the hips. The pillow will help to stabilize the baby and give you better images. You're gonna go ahead and uh, lower the diaper and don't hesitate to ask parents for help in keeping the baby calm during the exam. This could mean being fed beforehand or even having just having a pacifier in hand. With a linear transducer, start in the sagittal position with the notch facing the infant's head. Sweep left to right, up and down, and you're looking for abnormalities or anything that jumps out at you. Turn the transducer 90 degrees to get the transverse position and sweep again through the spine looking for abnormalities. The first thing you want to do is document the level of the conus, but before that you have to determine what vertebrae you're actually looking at here. There are two ways to find the end of the thoracic segment at T12. You can feel for the last rib and scan at that level, or I like to count from the lumbosacral junction, and you can tell where the lumbosacral junction is by the shape of the vertebrae. You'll see the uh, cervical vertebrae are smaller and flatter, and the lumbar are uh, rounder and bigger. So right where they change shape, that's the junction, and you can go ahead and just count up from there. So L5, L4, L3, L2, and L1, and be, above that will be the thoracic portion. So now we have the vertebrae in order, we can look at where the conus ends. It should be between L1 or L2. Uh, there's some literature that even says up to L3, but go ahead and consult your physician with this. After the conus, you can scan inferiorly down. You'll see the phylum, which is that thin hyperechoic filament. The phylum normally terminates at the lumbosacral junction around L5 to S1. And again, this structure should be less than two centimeters. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at the spinal cord and its movement. 
In the transverse view, the spinal cord will be as that tubular structure with the central hyperechoic complex in the middle. The dura is on top and it's going to be an anechoic looking structure. It's just a thick membrane that surrounds the spinal cord. Here's an example of the normal movement of the spinal cord. We want to see the spinal cord move to rule out a tethered cord. So go ahead and take a cine of the movement. Now that you've documented all those structures, you can finish up by documenting the thoracic, sacral, and coccyx in sagittal and transverse. The coccyx is a small body inferior to the uh, last sacral vertebrae of S5. And again, the, it's mostly cartilage and neonate, so it may appear, appear more hypoechoic than the rest of the spine. When you're finished, wipe off the infant with a soft cloth, put the diaper back on, and make sure you bundle the baby back up the way you found them.